Okay, so imagine this, right? Like, what if you could actually predict the stock market, you know, not perfectly, but with more than just random chance? And we're not talking about, like, day trading here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're thinking bigger picture weekly trends. Is that even possible? That's exactly what we're going to deep dive into today. Can machine learning, all those fancy algorithms, can they actually forecast how the market's going to move week by week? And spoiler alert, it's not a simple yes or no answer. Get ready for some twists and turns. We've got a whole stack of research to unpack. And trust me, you're going to come away with a whole new way of thinking about how random the market really is. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. I think what's really cool about this research is that it's focusing on weekly movements, not daily. Yeah, at first I thought, well, that's less actionable, right? Like, it doesn't give me that instant buy or sell signal. Right. But then I started thinking about it, like, wouldn't I rather ride a wave of consistent trends than just get tossed around by every little daily blip? Totally. Less stress, a clearer view of the bigger picture, and, you know, there's a practical side, too. The research actually points out that focusing on weekly predictions takes way less computational power. So you're saying, I don't need a supercomputer to try this out. Exactly. They're trying to make these techniques accessible, which is really exciting. Cool. But, okay, here's the big question that's probably on everyone's mind right now. Didn't we learn in, like, Finance 101 that market prediction is basically impossible? Ah, uh, you were talking about those classic financial theories. Right, right. Like the efficient market hypothesis. Yeah. And the random walk hypothesis. Yeah, the EMH, RWH, they basically say... All the available info is already baked into the stock price, so good luck predicting anything. Yep. So how can machine learning even have a chance? Well, here's the thing. Even the researchers acknowledge that those hypotheses, while powerful, might not tell the whole story. They suggest there might be cracks in that perfect market efficiency. Oh, interesting. Cracks, you say. Especially in emerging markets, where the flow of information isn't always as smooth. So let's talk about the tools these researchers are using. Machine learning models. When I hear that, I picture like robots in suits trading stocks. Is that close? Not quite. Think of it more like having a diverse team of experts, right? Yeah. Each one analyzing the market from a different angle. We've got support vector machines or SVMs for short. Okay. We've got artificial neural networks, ANNs, and a bunch of others. Each one's got its own unique approach to finding patterns. So it's like a whole team of like market savvy algorithms. I like that analogy. Yeah. But what clues in the data can they even use to try and predict the future? That's where things get really interesting. It's all about something called feature engineering. It's like equipping our team of experts with the right tools to see the market clearly. Okay, love a good tool analogy. Tell me more. The research focuses on three main categories of features, technical indicators, scaling laws, and something called directional changes. All right, break it down for me. Technical indicators, that's the stuff all the chartists love to talk about, right? Like moving averages and trends and so on. Exactly. Things like max ED, for example. Max ED. Yep. That's like a speedometer for stock momentum. Shows you if a trend is picking up steam or slowing down. Or RSI, which looks at the strength of price movements to spot those potentially overbought or oversold situations. Okay, makes sense. So those indicators are helping the models find patterns and all that messy price and volume data. Exactly. But then we get to scaling laws. Now, this is where I really started geeking out. Tell me. So imagine you're charting price changes over time. At first glance, it probably looks like a random jumble, right? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but scaling laws, they reveal this hidden order, almost like a rhythm to the market's movements. Okay, and then we've got, what was it directional changes? Yeah, that's right. Now, this one zooms back, but on a really micro level. Yeah. It's about capturing those tiny but super important shifts in price direction. So like those moments where the market hesitates before making a big jump. Exactly. 
Pinpointing those micro movements can be really valuable, especially if you're thinking about high frequency trading. Okay, so we've got our expert algorithms. We've given them some fancy tools to analyze the market. But here's where I got really curious. The researchers didn't just feed raw data into the models. They tweaked it, right? They did indeed. They used data augmentation, which is a pretty cool technique, and they specifically gave more weight to samples with bigger price swings. Okay, now hold on. Didn't that seem like they were kind of like skewing the results? It might seem that way at first, but there's a strategic reason behind it. By emphasizing those larger price movements, the models become more sensitive to the jumps in the market that have the potential to be really profitable. So they're not just trying to predict every little wiggle. They're focusing on the moves that really matter for maximizing returns. Exactly. But now we come to a really crucial question. How do we know if any of this actually works? Right. Like, we need a way to measure the success of these models. Not just, oh, it kind of looks good, but again, something more objective. And that's where the idea of a random trader benchmark comes in. Okay, a random trader. Explain this to me. Imagine a group of traders who just randomly decide whether to buy or sell each week, just flipping a coin, essentially. Their overall return becomes our baseline. Ooh. So we can compare how the machine learning models perform against these random traders. And what's fascinating is that the research found even random traders can sometimes make a profit, especially over short periods. Because sometimes random luck works out. Exactly. But the key takeaway is that the machine learning models, particularly one called the multilayer perceptron, consistently outperform those random traders. So it's not just about beating the market, it's about beating the odds of random chance. That benchmark is really clever. It gives us a much clearer way to assess these models. Absolutely. It brings a level of rigor that's often missing in studies like this. Okay, so we've set the stage. We've got our expert algorithms. We've got our benchmark for comparison. But now let's get to the heart of the matter. Yeah. How well did these models actually predict real-world market movements. Well, that's where things get even more interesting. I'm ready. So when it came to predicting those big American indexes, like the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, the models generally did pretty well. Okay. But, you know, there were some surprises. Like what? For example, the logistic regression model, that one's usually pretty reliable. Yeah. It actually kind of underperformed on the S&P 500. So even with all this fancy tech, there's no sure thing. Right. It's good to remember that the market can always throw a curveball. What about when it came to predicting individual stocks? Were the results more consistent there? Well, that's where things got even more interesting, I'd say. Predicting how individual stocks would move that was way more challenging. The results were all over the place, depending on which model you looked at. Really? Yeah. Some models even did worse than our random traders, remember them? Oh, yeah, the coin flippers. Exactly. And this was on certain stocks, not all of them. Wow, that's kind of mind-blowing. That really shows you how complex those individual stocks are. Right. Super unpredictable. So out of all these models they tested, was there like a star performer, one that really stood out from the crowd? Yes, there was. The multilayer perceptron, or MLP for short. MLP, okay. That one consistently did the best. Nice. What made it so special? Well, not only did it beat those random traders on the major indexes, but it also had really good accuracy when it came to predicting individual stock movements. It was like the MVP of our machine learning team. The MLP? MVP, I like it. Yeah. Okay, but like with any research, I'm sure there are limitations. What caveats did the researchers point out? What should we keep in mind here? One of the big ones is that they didn't really take into account all those real-world market frictions. Frictions? What do you mean by that? I'm talking about those little costs and inefficiencies that can eat into your profits, even if your predictions are right on the money. Give me some examples. Well, think about transaction fees. Every time you buy or sell, there's a little cost there. Right, right. And then there's the time it takes to actually execute a trade. Like you see an opportunity, but there's that little lag between seeing it and actually acting on it. The market might have moved by then. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then you got to consider that your own trades, especially if they're big, they can actually move the market a little bit themselves, especially if you're dealing with a stock that isn't super heavily traded. It's like you're part of the system you're trying to predict. Exactly. So yeah, the research is in this kind of idealized world where those frictions don't exist, which makes sense from a research standpoint, but we need to remember those things when we think about applying these ideas in real life. Right. Keep it real. Exactly. And another thing, they only focused on developed markets, mainly the U.S. Ah, so what about those emerging markets we were talking about earlier, the ones that might be less efficient and maybe more predictable? 
Right. Well, this research doesn't tell us how these models would perform there. There's a whole new area to explore. Totally. It'd be really interesting to see if machine learning could unlock even more predictive power in those markets. And there's one more limitation I want to mention. Hit me. They only looked at buying strategies, like when to buy a stock. Mm -hmm. They didn't test if these models could be used for short selling, you know, when you're betting on a stock going down. Oh, yeah. A lot of traders use that, especially the ones who trade more actively. Exactly. So it makes you wonder if these models could be adapted for that approach too, right? Could they tell you when to short a stock? That opens up a whole other can of worms. It seems like we've only just started to explore what machine learning can do in finance. Oh, absolutely. There's so much potential, so much more to learn and discover. It's an exciting time to be in this field. I mean, we're basically trying to unlock the secrets of the market. Right. It's like we've always seen the stock market as this random collection of numbers. But maybe, just maybe, there's a deeper order, a hidden logic that machine learning can help us see. I think so. It's about pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible, combining human intuition with the power of these algorithms, and it could change everything about how we approach investing. Okay, so much to think about. We've talked about expanding the types of data used, but how about stepping back and looking at the big picture? I mean, what does all this mean for our listener who's probably sitting there mind blown by all this? Where should they even begin if they want to explore this stuff further? Well, I'd say the first step is simple. Be curious. Don't be afraid to dive into the research we've talked about. It's a great starting point. And there are tons of resources online, courses, communities, where you can learn more about machine learning and how it's used in finance. It's a rabbit hole, but a fun one. And don't just stay in theory land. Yeah. There are open source tools out there, platforms where you can actually build and test your own models. Get your hands dirty. Exactly. And remember, this is a journey. The market's always changing. So you got to stay curious, stay adaptable. Don't be afraid to question everything you think you know. Love that. Well, this deep dive has been truly mind expanding. We went from can you even predict the stock market mm. to exploring how machine learning might just be able to do that and maybe even better than random chance. But it's not about finding some magic formula or letting the algorithms do all the work. It's about understanding how the market works, using machine learning as a tool, and making smart decisions based on all the information you have. And hey, if you're feeling inspired, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Tell us what you would focus on if you were designing your own set of features for these models. Yeah, let's keep this conversation going. There's so much more to discover together. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. We'll catch you next time.